Oh, you're ready for the end of days, huh? You got your canned food and your Tupperware roughneck bins full of 556, 7.62, and Cosmoline. Canned beans, canned beans, canned beans, CJ2A and canned beans, lard and canned beans. No, I don't want to see your ham radio license. 1948, Jeep Willys, CJ2A. Everywhere you go, you're going to be going 30 miles an hour, dick out, watching everybody's day get ruined. Oh, nice. Every single shirt you own has a black and white American flag on the left shoulder. Oh, I guess you served, huh? I drive a CJ2A, and here's what's clipped to my belt. Amazon branded multi-tool LED flashlight, LED pen light flashlight, K-bar knife, banyo fine radio, signal mirror, metal compass, Taurus Judge 410 filled with ice melt and airsoft pellets, one epi pen and a roll of Luco tape, 35 millimeter film canister, half full of smelling salts, three photos of Jocko Willink, all the same photo. One fully functional hit clips, ready to play Survivor by Destiny's Child, one Sony Ericsson GC99, and one Motorola Bravo Pager, and a list of improbable scenarios where I will become the most important person when the EMP goes off. The entire Tri-County area will come to me for survival tips. I look forward to the apocalypse. It will raise my social standing. When the bomb drops, I'll finally get pussy. All right, guy. Great. And by the way, stop eating canned beans. Eat something that honestly tastes good. This episode of Regular Car Reviews is sponsored by Factor. Hey, Brian, is it cold? Is it? It's, it's Pennsylvania. It's Pennsylvania in the wintertime. Yes, I'm cold. These houses are old. And they're leaky, so yes, I'm cold. Factor. I haven't seen the sun in nine days, but I'm having a good meal, and I'm taking care of myself. I'm going to the gym. And Factor now has wellness shots. I've been making mixed drinks out of them. This is apple, ginger, lemon, and cayenne. I'm not telling you to do this, but I've been putting seltzer water on them. Mmm. Oh, it has bite to it. It's good. So Factor, our uh, dietitian. <laughs> oh, that's ginger. That's good. It's got, it, it is real ginger, so it's making me wince a little bit. I got the keto pack this time. I'm trying to cut down, cut down on carbs a little bit on the winter time, do a little bit of winter bulk, lift some weights. Okay, my goal for RCR for the summertime is to be able to curl 50, a 50 pound weight in each hand and curl. I'm literally going to the gym after this. I can do 45s. I can get a 45 pound in each hand, go up and down, and I'm there, strict form, 40 pound, 45 pound weights. I can't yet move the 50s. I don't know, maybe tonight will be the night. And I'll, and I'll post something up. Hang on a minute. <laughs> Good. Factor makes meeting your nutrition goals easier than ever by delivering fresh, never frozen, dietitian approved meals right to your doorstep. Thank you, Past Brian, for doing the voiceover. Head to factor75.com or click the link below and use code REGULAR50 to get 50% off your first Factor box. I was good. I kind of skipped lunch today. All oh, this hits so, they're so tasty. What if I drink coffee and the wellness shot at the same time? That'd be bad. <laughs> Once again, head to factor75.com or click the link below and use code REGULAR50 to get 50% off your first Factor box. Oh yeah, one more thing I forgot to tell you. With your uh, subscription, you get lights. With your subscription, you get free wellness shots for life with your subscription. So I threw out the box and I drank them all. I got one left. Free wellness shots for life. It's got lemon hunt. That, that's, you get a variety pack. Whole bunch of different of these. Whole bunch of different wellness shots. They're amazing. They taste great. I've been making the drinks with them. No joke. Anyway, thank you. And back to the video. The CJ2A was the first mass produced, I'm making big air quotes here, Jeep after World War II. So, 
The first was the CJ-1, the civilian Jeep Model 1. That was a proof of concept built from a military Jeep while World War II was still going on. Folks at Willys knew that the war was going to be over soon, so they were getting ready to transition back into civilian manufacturing. The CJ-1 wasn't a commercial product. It was just an internal exercise to piece together an example of what a civilian Jeep might look like. The CJ-2 was a refined test run of the CJ-1 concept. Only a few dozen were made, and they were not sold to the public. According to Wikipedia, serial numbers 6 and 9, nice, are restored and running. So at last we arrive at the CJ-2A. Um, is this the CJ-2? No, Pally. This is the CJ-2A. The CJ-2A is the OK for real this time production run. And most of the fake military Jeeps you see that owners claim are real World War II Jeeps are really CJ-2As, painted all of drab, and covered with every accessory. Contradicting accessories, too. Stars on the side, sacks of mail, and a mounted 30 cal. Welcome to World War II weekend at Reading Regional Airport. Time for adult make-believe. Remember when cosplay was called make-believe? Jeep remembers. Jeep CJ2A. A four-wheel drive vehicle for taking a shortcut to a noble identity. CJ2A. The official car of whistling suicide is painless whenever there's a lull in dinner conversation. Jeep CJ2A. Brought to you by bringing an entrenching tool to Myrtle Beach. If you take a CJ2A owner hiking, they're just going to go, um, actually, my Jeep could climb this, my Jeep could ford this, my Jeep could get over this, my Jeep won't get stuck in this, and you know what, buddy? You're right. It wouldn't. The original rear gearing of a CJ2A is 5.38. Let me say that again, 5.38. Not 410, 5.38 rear end gear ratio. That is steamroller slow. And that's before shifting into low range. And it has a short wheelbase with lots of articulation and tall tires that can squish and move with the terrain rather than crash over it. So yes, 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 buddy. Your CJ2A can ugga chugga over this hiking trail. But you know what it can't do? hold its doors closed without ratchet straps, or drive faster than 45 miles an hour, or see out the back with the roof on, or keep the rain out, or keep the heat in, or create, or create a quiet interior environment where you can have a conversation with your passenger, or keep a wife that shares a genuine interest in your hobbies. The Jeep CJ2A isn't a car. It's barely a civilian Jeep, or even a practical mode of transportation for that matter. This is, and was originally sold as, an agricultural tool. Hook a trailer to the back, hook a tiller to the back, hook a plow to the front. You have a power, you have a PTO on this thing. Sire a farmhouse full of daughters and one son. Have simple thoughts and a UTI. Think about it. The CJ2A was sold only from 1945 to 1949. Only about 28 years prior, or one war ago, agriculture was still based on beasts of burden, like horses and oxen. During World War II, most factories that made tractors were making tract vehicles or whatever. So Willys saw a gap and filled it. And as a general purpose farm vehicle that can go on a paved road if absolutely necessary, works. But in 2024, a Honda Rancher ATV is more car than a Jeep CJ2A. I made your dad come so hard, he wrote me into the will. If you try to drive this on public roads, every shift is critical as the coarse gears reluctantly mesh. Pitiful squirts of horsepower oozing toward the rear hubs like maple syrup in winter. 
loud protests from the engine, devilish vibrations, and unsettling leans and corners. And now it's time to shift again, and the locations of each gear wiggle and squirm away from you like a toddler refusing to wear socks. The CJ2A shakes and trembles in every corner and fills me with anxiety, like watching a petite server struggle with a big tray of food. And just like the greatest generation, these things need to be trailered everywhere. Like a Ferrari 308, the best thing about it is seven seconds long. Only in a CJ28, it's when you get in and get out. Willie's CJ2A, the official car of guys who want to be in the military but can't pass the ASVAB. This is for Walter the Milkman in 1945, who got a medical exemption while all his friends went off to fight in Europe. And now he's jealous of the casualties because he saw up close how they were mourned. Man, I wish someone would miss me like that. Willie's CJ2A, this has no business on the road. Like a man in his 80s with cataracts that have become catacombs, this has no business on the road. Like a door-to-door -door salesman in the age of remote work, this has no business on the road. Like PennDOT when they see a collection of potholes big enough to ruin a monster truck suspension, this has no business on the road. Like a chicken who's already made it to the other side. Like a travel blogger during a global shutdown, this has no business on the road. Like a travel nurse with no living patience, this has no business on the road. Like the entrails of a deer who dive-bombed into oncoming traffic. Like a stand-up comic with only regional jokes, this has no business on the road. Okay, I think that's all of them. But seriously, this doesn't belong on the road. It has nothing to do on the road. It has nowhere to belong in traffic. This is farm equipment with now a 78 Pinto engine. Yeah, the original Go Devil isn't here. It's a 78 Pinto engine that's powering this. And a 78 Pinto engine <laughs> is an upgrade. According to Jacob, the 23 Ford Lima... Lima, Lima, is a common swap for these, and from the looks of it, a pretty necessary one, too. On paper, the 2.3 is making about 80 horsepower at the crank, but this honestly feels a lot closer to 50, so you're already starting at a disadvantage when it comes to getting this thing roadworthy. Yes, overhead cam, so now you have some protection from over-revving. Yes, it has all the necessary work done to make it street legal. And yes, the steel body would probably mess up the other guy worse in any sort of collision. Now, now the saggy bags of mostly water inside this Jeep, well, who knows about that. But in a realistic sense, this might just be the most dangerous car we've ever done on regular car reviews. This may be the most dangerous car I've ever driven on regular car reviews because it's not meant for what we're putting it through. Think about that. We don't put our volunteer cars through pretty much of anything, just standard driving with the occasional highway pull, but you can't even do that with this. You can't even go, we don't even go out on the highway with this. You see us on the state highway out there? Nope. We can't even make the pull up the highway. It doesn't work. It back roads only. Attempting to drive a CJ2A on any road with a speed limit higher than 35 is like trying to shout slurs in the center of Philly. You're just asking to be introduced to the latest innovations in the field of bodily harm. To Jacob's credit, he did work to make this thing passable. After searching for two years, he found a Arctic hardtop from an M38. It had no doors, so he drove it with no doors. And then he finally found doors, but they didn't fit. So he added sheet metal latches and ratchet straps to get the doors to hold shut. Preparing to drive this car is like getting strapped in like you're going to the goddamn moon. But they work. They do. They stay closed. It's more credit to Jacob's persistence and determination than anything about this Jeep. The entire drivetrain is a Willys MB because the MB and the CJ2A were produced at the same time. So all those guys at World War II weekend who have the CJ-2A, that's a fake military war jeep, and they, they can say, this is military spec, because the CJ-2A, yes, has military parts in it, because that's what Willie's Overland had, because they had all the surplus, so they're just building civilian cars out of the stuff. Oh, you ain't storming no hill. Oh, and the, and the rear gear ratio is no longer 5.38. He has some highway gears on <laughs> highway gears. You know, the rear end is now with the more livable highway gears. 
488. <laughs> no, nope, not even 410. <laughs> 488. But but even with that, there, there still is no speed. There's no get up and go. Um, not even in high gear because because this is the transmission gear ratios. First gear ratio is 2.66 to 1. Compare that to a Wrangler JL, which has a 4.46 to 1. Plus, these 34-inch tires are the tallest tire Jacob has ever seen on a factory axle flat fender, since most are 30-inch tires. So the extra 4 inches of tire, coupled with the MB's notoriously awful gear ratios, and it's literally an uphill battle to drive flat. The positive, I suppose, is that this is virtually impossible to stall in low gears, but it speaks to the cobbled together nature of a vehicle like this, which almost has to be pieced together as a matter of necessity. This has the Willys MB T87 transmission and modifications like Casey Daylight or Off-Road Lights, an electric auxiliary fan, and a 2-inch lift, along with seats from a CJ5. Also, from what Jacob was told, the previous owner added 90s Ranger intake manifolds and spacers for the carb. In addition, he has front and rear lockers for this thing. They just haven't been installed yet. So yeah, this is a military-grade golf cart. It almost feels to even judge this as a car because it feels like it's meant to transport angry lieutenants around a closed base, not shuttle PA drivers on PA roads in PA weather, but then Willys did try. As the story goes, the CJ-2A was a civilian-focused Jeep for post-World War II. At that point, domestic civilian automobile production had not yet resumed. In a way, this was the intermediate vehicle for men in the transition between military and civilian life. Willie's CJ2A, for the man with a secret child somewhere in France, when a woman would go on unsolved mysteries in the 80s to find her birth father. Seven out of ten times, a Willie's owner is the guy she's looking for. When the CJ2As went into production in July 17, 1945, the war was still going on in the Pacific. Now, today, the uh, CJ2A models are distinguished by designations VEC for very early civilian, and EC for early civilian. The difference mostly is that the VEC models didn't have features that would make the CJ2A more civilian friendly, like the bigger headlights or windshield wipers. By that, I mean vacuum-powered windshield wipers, as opposed to windshield wipers that you had to operate with your hand. Ever see those? Anyway. So this CJ2A is practically a luxury model over the first run. And considering this model is 1948, and would have been produced in calendar year 1947 with the two-year time frame of the EC's production, one would assume this would be an EC model, but at the end of the day, how much difference would it have made to civilian operation? This was Willie's overland play for the agricultural and industrial sector. So when they say civilian, they don't really mean Sunday drive civilian. They mean practical work civilian. But this isn't that practical unless you load it up with the options Willie's Overland made available to CJ2As back in the late 40s. Stuff you would think would come standard if they had any hopes of marketing this as farm equipment. Stuff like winches, heavy-duty springs, a radiator designed to operate in hot climates, you know, a generator. I mean, I could understand stuff like a front passenger seat or a plow being optional, but it seems like your work is already cut out for you when you bought this, unless you optioned it out. I couldn't find the price back in 1948, but back in 1946, this would have cost you $1,200 for whatever a base model was, which is about $15,200 in 2024. So if you're going to pay $15,000 anyway, why wouldn't you just buy a dedicated farming vehicle rather than something that tried to do everything? Well, why do they sell those luxury ATVs and uh, the, that really nice farm equipment, like glamour farm equipment outside of the Cabela's? You know, $15,000 today, that pretty much buys you uh, a basic ATV with a roof and little plastic doors. But again, back then, we weren't in peacetime. Options were limited. And so the CJ2A survived, well, for one more year after this anyway, before the CJ3A came along. But that was probably longer than it realistically deserved to last. The CJ2A needed to stick around long enough to give Willie's Overland 
an in with domestic industrial car production and for the American automotive industry to pick back up. But I have a hard time believing that, even in its own time, it was anything other than a shortcut to a noble identity. You know you're in America when big hands are considered a turn-on, even more if they have calluses. The thought of a hard-working man with deep tissue exhaustion is our American Adam. The self-reliant, self-actualized progenitor of our national identity. Who needs a big house or an architect to build it? A man who builds his own house will never feel like he's trapped in a soulless coffin because a part of his spirit will be in it. Who needs any other job but to till the soil and work the fields that nature has given us? We will never be without supply or in want of steady work. You can trace contemporary American identity to this archetype. We fetishize hard-working men, and thus we deify its signifiers. Fall to your knees and taste the soil, tread by a willies. In a way, the farmer went from being a common profession to an archetype, a folk hero in overalls. As we got further away from the greatest generation, vehicles like these took on greater significance because they represent the endless search for a nobler identity. The search for countries that don't think Americans are fat and lazy. Countries that don't think Americans are stupid probably think we're moral corruptors. And so we try and project a more rugged, reverent national character. But it ignores that this isn't just an identity you can wear without the struggle. After all, everybody wants to wear Carhartt until it's time to do Carhartt things. The legacy of the American Adam is found in the orphan dignity of a man dirtied and soiled from the work of taming uncooperative soil. Soil that's on land under constant threat of foreclosure. He gave his blood and his sweat in the Pacific or the European theater and the unwelcome, poorly resisted trespassing of tears. He gave farm work to the premature aging of his bones and the strain of his heart. He did this all to give his family a life. Not even necessarily a better one than he had, but the promise guaranteed by the yellowing parchment of our republic. And what happened? From his ennobling seed sprang a generation born at first and goal, who'll tell you they ran the ball from kickoff. And then that generation spat out kids who spend a month's salary in dive bar and cover charges every year. And that generation gave birth to what is probably the new beat generation. Life is too short not to try beating back the blues with alcohol and garage band power chords. Life is too short to not let the demons in every once in a while. God will understand. This is the legacy of our American folk hero in dusty overalls and sunburnt skin. They tried to shape a world in their image, but all that really happened was we got a bunch of signifiers that project the aura that could have been had without the life experience that made it real. So go ahead. Buy a Jeep CJ2A. Don't you dare once accept one drop of praise for it, because you didn't do the work. It's not a military Jeep, and you're not honoring your forefathers with this. You're co-opting their experience for your own goddamn clout. I see right through you. This is a fantastic off-roader. It's, it's a pleasure to operate a vehicle designed to do one thing, to drive through France. But it doesn't work in America. That's the irony of the CJ2A. So have one, show it off, let people touch it, let people drive it, talk about it as a car, but don't for one second think you're a hero.